beautiful poison inside and out. Always the same, no changes. Uh, very consistent. And we're really going to miss her, but I'm sure that her life impacted many, especially her journey with her illness. And I have listened to the accounts of many people who was inspired by her journey. So even towards her transition, she was motivating and inspiring other people to enjoy their lives. So we want to thank God for life again. Thank God for family and everyone that's connected to her near and far. And we pray that this time the Lord will uh, comfort. That's the best word I can use right now. Comfort that family during this time of bereavement. Again, Happy New Year to all of you. We have all made it over <laughs> that are alive. We thank God for our space here. And of course, our thoughts should be how we're going to be better this year. Uh, I say to you every year, as it relates to prophecy, my prophecy don't ever change. It's the same thing every year, and that is you will receive whatever you sowed last year and the years before. Okay? Uh, I don't think the prophecies get any more accurate than that right there. So whatever it is that you would have sowed last year, 2021, and even the years uh, pass, then according to the law of sowing and reaping, you will reap what you sow. Despite what others tell you, okay, you know you didn't plant good seeds, you know you didn't live right, you know you didn't do the right thing, well, do not be bamboozled to believe that because somebody tell you things are going to be better for you, knowing you didn't put in the work, that is going to be better. That is not how it works. If that is the case, then we should toss our Bibles and the rules that are with them. Okay? God is not a God that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, he'll do it. If he spoke it, he will definitely make it good. Now, I'm currently doing two series right now. And uh, one we started last year, and that topic they're currently going on, the topic there was breaking the mindset of poverty going into 2022. And we are currently on our, we just completed about a week ago, part seven, all right? Now, I didn't do any of that this week. I was extremely bombarded this week. A lot of calls that I should have made this week. I couldn't because I was really, really tied up. So we're going to continue that hopefully tomorrow. We began a second series on uh, the 1st of January this year, 2022. And it's titled Resetting Relationships. Now, for those of you who just listened to me on the radio, I would strongly advise you visit my YouTube page Facebook page or even Twitter pages where you will see these series, okay? And again, just type in Resetting Relationships in 2022 by uh, Kevin Ewing and also Breaking the Mindset of Poverty in 2022. Now, the idea behind the Breaking the Mindset of Poverty coming into this year was to literally get you to engage in what I always tell you to do, and that is to seek the laws and the rules for whatever it is that you're dealing with from a biblical perspective, of course, if you want to see a change in the dislike positions that you're currently in. And we cannot believe that because we were irresponsible with our finances, we never plan, we never budget, we never look at our financial dashboard, we don't save, we have no financial plan, we don't even know how much we owe the, the banking institution, the furniture company. All we know is we just pay and pay and pay, and we don't know if they're adding more money to it. We know none of that. So the idea of this teaching from a biblical perspective is to show us our responsibility in regards to the resources that God has given us. And I can assure you, when you would have done that in terms of doing a review of it, you will see how much you are financially hemorrhaging unnecessarily, okay? You would see where you, if you had cut this, done that, or whatever is necessary to do based on what you observe with your finances, 
there, there, you would see there are many opportunities for you to change your financial circumstances. I'm saying this because, again, many people, when it comes down to December, they're financially exhausted, they were irresponsible, and so they go to a church where some prophet is for the prophet or prophet is to tell them, I see good things happen for you. I see your finances turning around. And it's not true because what you're saying to the rest that are following the rules is that why waste your time when this guy over here or this lady have a shorter cut? And there are no shortcuts to the rules of God. All right? And this has to be made extremely clear to everyone that's listening. Okay? You have to understand that life is about laws and rules and principles. And if whether you are aware of that or not, or whether you believe that or not, is irrelevant. Some way, somehow you'll find yourself in the mix, whether knowingly or even ignorantly. Nevertheless, the law does not pause because you're ignorant to it. If you engage it, then that's the result. If you don't save money, then don't expect money for be, to be on your account when uh, that rainy day finally arrives. All right? And in those teachings, I was giving you tips on how you could save, how you, how you budget, how you, you know, do all of those uh, basic stuff, all in an attempt to change your current financial status, all right? And the way that you do all of that is you have to break the mindset of poverty, that consumer mindset, that mindset that you're a compulsive spender or impulsive spender, you have no regard for saving. So if someone is telling you God is gonna bless you with $2 million, what they're really telling you, if you're not disciplined with your finances, is God, is God is getting ready to destroy your life. Kevin, what you mean by that? Well, if you couldn't manage the little that you had, and for those that tied, if you weren't tithing then, because a lot of you say that, you know, you, you believe in the tithe, but you don't do it. I don't understand that. That's kind of confusing to me. You don't pay the $10 of the $100, but yet you want to convince me that if God were to bless you uh, with a million dollars, you would give 100000 I'd love to see that. Now that day would be the, eight, the ninth one of the world right there. I would love to see that. So if you're not disciplining yourself now through the little things that you have control over, then whatever you're doing now, you will master it in the future. So you have to, 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 to end this year, for if God spares your life to see December, then for you not to be in this economic crunch, this embarrassing financial state, then you, you have to follow the rules to attain that particular goal. In our resetting relationships, I mean, I just came with the blocks with this, us coming into 2022, and many of us, and especially the Christians I'm talking about, especially them, because they're nobody more hypocritical in this planet than, than some Christians, not all and primarily when it comes to relationships, all right? They have all the Holy Ghost in the church. They speak in every tongue possible, but cannot speak to their sisters and brothers. Blood. Cannot speak to their son or their daughter, whom they cannot control. And because the son or daughter wouldn't submit to their bullyish ways, then they ostracize the child. They, the child now becomes the black sheep. So I covered a number of things in that first teaching, but I'm going to diversify them as I begin to go on, dealing with the controlling mother, the controlling husband, the controlling wife, okay? Most of these relationships where you have everybody wants to be a controller, but nobody could control them. The, the parent who believe their children owe them everything in the world as if the children force them to bring them here. And I made it clear in that teaching that you, when you decided to get pregnant, whether it happened by accident or whether you did it intentionally, then you would have automatically signed on to take care of your responsibility. Child will owe you nothing. And while I agree 
that children must honor their parents. I don't doubt that. I also agree to the second portion of that. You should not provoke them. So a lot of marriages will continue to fail when the parent don't know their role. When the parents still feel they could dictate to the child, even while the child was supposedly supposed to be cleaving to their partner. And their, their understanding of a relationship is so warped because in their mind, mommy come first. Even though, even though the scripture made it clear, leave and cleave. He didn't say hate your mommy. He didn't say don't help the mommy. So the child now finds it difficult to share his love between his wife or her husband and mommy, which should never be the case because mommy and, and parents' love and spousal love is entirely two different things. That should never be uh, an option there. So all of these things I covered, so I, I strongly advise you to really go and watch them uh, as I go forward so they'll bring more understanding to you. It's gonna bring plenty, plenty insight. And I just wanna cover this last piece before I quickly go into today's teaching. You know, when it comes to, to Christian family members who, I just don't get it. You don't speak. You don't speak to your sister. You don't speak to your brother. And, and the thing about it, every year, every year God spare your life to cross over into the next year. And you've made it a point that you're not going to give them for whatever it is. But yet, 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 yet. You are the most uh, eloquent speaker on the pulpit. The, you, you know how to set your uh, sp subject and predicate and your verbs and pronouns and, and dig up in the history of Jesus and the, 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 the sons of men and bring it on home. All of that you could do, okay? But you do not have the, the, the nerve to go and knock on your sibling door, who y'all came from, the same mother or daddy, whether or not you were right or wrong, and say, I forgive you, or please forgive me. So I find that to be super hypocritical, and such people could never put their hand on me but pray for me, because you are a hypocrite. And the reality is, and I'm gonna end right here with this, the reality is, you are bound for hellfire. You are, listen, you are going at 7 million miles per hour to the gates of hell. You ain't, how could you make such a statement like that? Well, according to scripture, not Kevin, according to scripture, Mark eleven twenty five, 25, he says, while you stand praying, forgive others, listen to the condition, forgive others so your heavenly father could forgive you, minister, deacon, deaconess, apostle, bishop, pastor. I expect the world to do it, because that's what the world do. But you, who most of them follow, behaving in this manner, and don't see nothing wrong with it. Your child you haven't spoken to the, for years, because they married someone they love but you don't like the person. What, that have nothing to do with you. Nobody interrupted your marriage. Nobody told you who you could marry and not marry. How is it that you could freely in this life do what you want to do, but you want to control the likes and dislikes of others? <laughs> I, I, it's just beyond me. The controlling factor. The pastor that doesn't speak to that particular member because the member don't agree with them or the member don't cheer them on like the rest of the other members. Man, what, what God y'all going to see? Who this God is? And where this, because I want nothing to do with it. And these are the things, I mean, that scripture is so profound because what that scripture is saying, he says, listen, listen, if you refuse to forgive Mary, if you refuse to forgive Martha, if you refuse to forgive Kevin, According to that scripture, from where I stand and where I understand, it says your heavenly father will not forgive you. Well, let's go a little deeper. Is, is, the, is that scripture also implying that 
all of the times I repented for the lying, the cheating, and the stuff that I did. You're saying to me, God never forgave me simply because I got it in for Kevin and I never release him? Well, you better believe it. You better believe it. So if you believe that color and that title puts a clause in God's law to exempt you, then you're more crazy than you look. So at the end of the day, at the end of the day, all right, that Bible is not going to change. God will not revisit and re-edit uh, uh, his word for you. Listen very carefully. Mark eleven twenty-five. 25. While praying, you must forgive others so that your heavenly Father will forgive you. Conditional. God says, I, ref I will not, I refuse to forgive you if you don't forgive the one whom you have wronged or whatever the case may be. So all of you, if you tell me you don't speak to this one because you was offended or whatever nonsense you run on with, I don't even care. Whatever foolishness you run on with, at the end of the day, if you refuse to forgive them, Buddy, I don't know what heaven you go into, unless they got a place on this earth, and before you enter, it, it says heaven, maybe that place. But as far as the, the, king, the, the, the paradise of God, you will never step foot there according to that scripture. I don't care how many souls you want, I don't care how great you are. If you are unforgiving, because forgiveness is the prerequisite to the kingdom of God. He said, if you confess your sins, 1 John 1 and 9, he is faithful and just to forgive you of those sins and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. How can he do that if you haven't met the prerequisite of forgiving other people who you see every day? So, all I could say to you is fix it. Your life has been spared Fix it. God has been merciful to you in spite of your no good ways, allowed you to see 2022, I believe, for the sole purpose of getting it right. It will be a travesty and a tragedy to know that by your gifts and callings, you were able to win souls for the kingdom, influence other people's lives for better, and I mean, your gift took you to places you would have never gone before. But let me be clear. The Bible never made the, your, good, your gifts a requirement for the kingdom of heaven. It will be a tragedy that you would have done all of that. But it is of no credit to you on the day that you stand before your Savior to see if your book is written, your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. We can't find it. And why we can't find it? Because you was mad with Susie for 15 years and you died with unforgiveness. Anyway, I'll leave that right there. I want to give a shout out also to our good friend there in Nassau who's celebrating an awesome birthday in the person of Jillian Curry Williams, our own fashionista, our own fashion designer, celebrating her wonderful years. And we want to, DJ and I want to wish you a, a happy birthday. And I know based on some of those photos I saw on Facebook, I, you, you, you don't, you don't bust enough. You, you wasn't even waiting. So we want to wish her a happy, happy birthday. Today, I want to start another series. So that means I'll be doing three series simultaneously. And this series was something that the Lord had placed on my heart from last year, but not to be released until the beginning of this year. Many listening to me right now will not hear this voice again in December coming. And what I mean by that is that many people are on the register for this year to transition. 
Unfortunately, a lot of the transitioning will be premature. It wasn't their time. And a lot of them will succumb to diseases and so on that as believers of Jesus Christ, they never followed the prescription to address their illness. Instead, they followed a prescription that was another gospel would only uh, intensify their sickness and increase the speed in which they were to transition out of here. But it was never God's will. And what we're going to see in this teaching today, we're going to look at, and the, the teaching actually is, the, the, the heading is, he sent his word and healed him. And our key scripture is Psalms 107 verse 20. And I'm going to show you in this teaching, and, and, and it's really going to be deep today and deep as we go forward, that at the end of the day, whatever you are challenged with, sickness-wise, as believers I'm talking about now, and if you are not, I'm talking, immerse in the word of God as your source to deliver you, then the truth is you're a co-conspirator to your own demise. We're going to look at the scriptures from an entirely different perspective, looking at the source of healing and how it was made available to all mankind. But as with everything else, man always want to add and take away from the laws of God. And the part that gets me is that even though they're carting believers, young and old alike, into the graveyard week after week, week after week, which if I, if, 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 let's say I never knew nothing about Christianity and someone invited me to their church and explained this, Jesus was the son of God and, you know, he was the creator of heaven and earth and he healed people. Okay, and, and I'm a very analytical person. And if I visited your church and I would see every other week or every week, I see young people dying from cancers and high blood pressures and diabetes. And, and I would have to ask you and your congregants, where is this Jesus, this, this healer that you guys dance about and, and do all kinds? What, 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 I don't understand it because... I figure, that based on your reports, he, he is a healer. He, he healed the blind. He, he opened the ears of the deaf. He raised people from the dead. I would have to ask that person, as well as their group, why isn't it happening here? I, I, I don't get it. I'm confused. That's like, taking your car to a mechanic shop and everybody saying that when they take the car there, yeah, the car is never fixed. So what is it that these people are doing to ensure such end result? So in this teaching, what we're going to do is we're going to literally, forensically dig into the scriptures and see exactly, exactly what this healing is about, how to attain it, who is it for, this is what we're going after. At the same time, we're going to debunk the utter foolishness and garbage that has crept into the churches that has replaced the biblical standard of healing. I'm sure many of you could agree with me that what we are seeing nowadays is profound. When somebody is spraying a bottle of juice in your mouth, you Jesus pillows, uh, oils and scarves and show every everything except what their, what Jesus did, their leader. And it's sickening because those who are just coming on board in Christianity who have not truly studied the Bible and being introduced to such dung, 
starts off wrong because they believe that this is the right way. And unfortunately, it will take an incident such as mommy or daddy or even themselves being diagnosed with a terminal illness. And they're doing everything to be cured except what this Bible tells them to do. They sow seeds, they blow, blow trumpets, they, everything, and this is so powerful, everything except what the Bible says. And, and it's just, I mean, to say it's sickening, I, 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 it's an understatement, right? So let's go to Psalms 107 again. And our series is titled, He Sent His Words and Heal Them. All right, so let's go to Psalms 107, and we're going to look at verse 20. Psalms 107, verse 20. And I want you to write these scriptures now because we're really, really going deep today. Psalms 107, verse 20 says, He sent His word uh -huh, and healed them. And I want you to circle the word, word. Because this is what he sent. He sent his word, and this is what we're going to explore in this teaching today. God sent his word and healed them. Mm -hmm. What else did the word do? And delivered them from, from their, their pending destruction. The scripture saying that this word, which we're going to explore, Delivered them, heal them. Mm. Mm. That's interesting. He sent his seed, no. He sent a shofar, no. He sent a scarf, no. He sent oil, no. And I'm not saying in certain instances you can't use these things. Let's be clear. And let's be fair. But I won't go straight to the core of what I need and what I need to do to engage the benefit of healing as a member of the body of Jesus Christ. I should not be suffering. I should not be whatever when there are rules that if I follow them, I will attain my healing. And I speak as one from experience and others who I would have engaged with in their agreement for their healing. We follow the rules. We didn't ask nobody to sow a seed. We didn't spray no grape juice in nobody's mouth. We didn't do none of that. We believe what the word says. We stood on the word. Our confidence was in the word of God. Boy, I love it already. The Bible says, he which is God sent, I have sent your healing. Package how? In the word. My Lord, I love it. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their instructions. My God, that's just getting too juicy already. All right. Now, I said to you from the onset, this teaching is going through the scriptures to extract what is really doing the healing. What should we really put our confidence in, in regard to how to be healed? Because every time we turn on the television, somebody got a new gimmick. Jesus glove, Jesus socks, G Jesus miracle oil, miracle water. Uh, oh, everything what we cannot find in scripture. So I told you to mark the word, word, in Psalms 107, verse 20. He sent, this is the key, he sent, what did he send for your healing? He sent his word. Boy, I love this. Okay, now, let's make sense. Let's go to John chapter 1. John chapter 1, beginning at verse 1, okay? Coming off the heels of Psalms 107 verse 20. He, which is God, sent his word. Because we want to know what this word is. Or who is this word? 
because this is where the healing is. This is where it's, what's going to deliver them from their destruction. So I want to know more about this word thing. I don't want to put no stupid spurs and, and Jericho and juice to heal your, your scalp and foolishness. I want to know what, the, what is this word because that's what I want to hold on to. So the scripture says in St. John chapter 1 beginning at verse 1, In the beginning was the word, uh-huh, here we see that word again, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Mm, boy, it's getting powerful. Verse 2, the same uh -huh, was in the beginning with God. Listen, listen. All things were made by him. Now, hold on now. We went from the word to him. Because going back to Psalms 107 verse 20, he sent his word to heal them. First John 1, dropping down now to verse 3, is now giving the word a gender. Take your time, Kevin. Verse 3 of John chapter 1. All things were made by him. Who is him? The word. All things were made by him, and without him or without the word was nothing, was not anything made that was made. And in him, in who? The word. <laughs> I love it. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. Let's drop down to verse 10 of John chapter 1. He was in the world. Who, who was in the world? The word. I love it. He was in the world, or the word was in the world, and the world was made by the word, or him, and the world knew him not. They didn't even know who their healer was. They didn't know who their deliverer was. They didn't even know who created. They're looking at him. When he came in, became, I don't want to jump ahead of myself, but when he became flesh, they, they didn't realize that we're looking at the one that did all of this. So verse 10 of, of St. John 1 says, He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. They rejected the source of healing. They rejected the source of deliverance. Why, Mr. Ewing? Only to replace it with sowing seeds for healing. Spraying foolishness all over your body, purchasing vials of oil for healing when he has sent his word freely to heal them. I come to offend today. Verse 12. But as many as received him, uh-huh, those who realize that it is the word that's going to change my circumstances, and particularly my, my health condition. But as many as receive him, who is him? The word. To them, to them gave he power to become, <coughs> excuse me, the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Verse 13 of John chapter 1. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Now, let's get to business. Verse 14 of John chapter 1. And the word <laughs> was made flesh, my God, and dwelt among us. Can you imagine this? Let me, let me before I, I go any further, let me, let me give you a little visual so you could see where I'm going today. Check this out. Let's say Jesus Christ okay, was to appear to us right now, all right? He is the word according to scripture. He was whom God sent to heal us. So let's say you have cancer, HIV, whatever. 
And he's standing and he says, listen, listen, Johnny. Do you believe I can heal you? This is Jesus talking to you now. This is the word. And you're looking like, <laughs> I know, I just try to get this uh, miracle juice off Amazon right now. I'm trying to see how I can get this here to spray at least a couple of this in my eye somewhere. The word looking right on his face. The one who was sent to heal him. I'm going to show you many instances of this in scripture. Where the, the Bible says, and he dwelt among us and didn't even know him, never recognize him. You got that big Bible right next to you, but you rather put that Bible down to send seed to somebody following a requirement that is never required by scripture for your healing. Everything surrounds the word of God, which is Jesus Christ. The Bible is very, very clear here. And it says, where are we now? The Bible says that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Now, isn't that interesting? But nobody recognized him. Isn't that interesting? Now, let's go a little step further so I could show you more and more who and what the word is. So let's go here now to... Uh, Let's go to 1 John 5, verse 7. 1 John, we just came from St. John. Let's go to 1 John 5, verse 7. All right? And listen to what it says here. For there are three that bear record in heaven. Because we're going to prove once again that when God says he sent his word to heal them, he sent Jesus Christ. When we just read in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God, and the word dwell among us became flesh. He that was Jesus Christ. So in 1 John 5 verse 7 it says, For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, which is God. The Word. Mm. Who is the Word again? Jesus Christ. He is the Bible. The Bible was walking among us back in the day. In the time of John and Matthew and them. The scriptures, they actually ate and conversed and did stuff with the scriptures, which was Jesus the Christ. And Jesus is trying to convince them, you're looking up to heaven and all these other, I am here. Your confidence should be in that Bible. Whatever I say about healing, that is me, Jesus Christ. Put your trust in me. Why are you letting these people lead you? That's why you're dying before your time. You're following other people's rules, but expect to get the word result. It will never happen. And the evidence of that is the multitude of people, believers in particular, being carted to the graveyard every weekend, every people who bury through the week and so on. Why? Because they, the flesh dwelled among them in the person of our holy scriptures. But they let some whomever these people are, come there and tell them, plant a seed for your healing. Order this vial of oil, miracle oil. Then you hire five fools to come and give false testimony. Oh, I remember when I had stage 30 cancer and I drink a little bit of this uh, cranberry Jesus juice and all of a sudden the cancer just ran away. Mmm. I sowed a seed. I what I'm saying to you people is you're putting your trust in everything except the word of God. The Bible says in 1 John 5 verse 7, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father which is God, the Word which is Jesus Christ, and who? The Holy Ghost. Let's go to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. And we're going to read from verse 14 to verse 20. Colossians chapter 1, we're going to read from verse 14, because we want to know more about the word. That's what we're doing. We are on this, this, this hunt as a result of uh, Psalms 107 verse 20. He, see, what, what sprung this is it says he sent his word to heal us. So there is healing for us. So we need to know more about this word. 
Not about planting seeds, not about shofars, not about miracle water and oil. No, that's not what the scripture says. The scripture says he sent his word. That's what I'm interested in. Col Colossians, Colossians 1, beginning at verse 14. It says, in whom we have redemption. It's speaking about Jesus Christ now. Through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him, who is him? Jesus Christ, a.k.a. the Word. For by the Word were all things created. Hold on. So that would be us. Right? Right. So he manufactured us. Yes, what you're trying to get at, Kevin. So if he is the manufacturer, wouldn't he also have all of the solutions and remedies when we fall into problems, in particular sickness? Yeah, Kevin, that makes sense. Okay, good. Now, where could we find in his word, go uh, purchase oil and, and, and foolishness? When he's saying, take me. Use me. But Jesus, we can't see you. How could we use you? you? You're still missing it? You're still missing it? I am the word. When you believe the scriptures, you believe Jesus Christ. Let me slow down a little bit here. Verse 15. For who is the image of the invisible God? The firstborn of every creature. For by him, which is the word were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, where they be thrones, dominions, or principalities, or powers, all, not pieces or some, all things were created by him or the word and for him or for the word. Verse 17 of Colossians 1. And he is before all things. And by him or by the word, listen, listen, all things consist or even exist. Let me, let me knock this out of the ballpark. The power that generates hell right now is because of Jesus Christ. All I hear is crickets. Because I know right now your traditions and religions. Or is he saying that? that stuff? No, I, I said what the Bible saying. He says all things consist. It cannot be in existence. It cannot be. It cannot do what it does without the power from him, a.k.a. the word. Because if you to say, Kevin, that's not true, then there is another creator is what you're telling me. The Bible is very clear. Verse 17 of Colossians 1. And he is first or before all things, and by him all things consist. Verse 18. And he, which is the word, is the head of the body. You all know I won't go with this, right? But I can back off today. See, in all of these scriptures are putting things into perspective. You don't put your confidence in Kevin. You don't put your confidence in Pastor. You don't put your confidence in the Apostle. Yes, dude, they should be doing is pointing me to the Word. Point me to the Word, preacher. Your job is very simple. Point me to the word. That's all I. He sent his word to heal me. He said that because of the word, everything was created for and by him. So, preacher, why are you leading me to vials of oil and Jesus' pillow, Jesus' spray, sow a seed? When, when, when are you going to lead me to the word of God? I'm listening. And all I can hear is crickets. I come to offend. But I'm offending with the word of God. Which if you are offended. But you hate. The Bible is very clear here in verse 18. And he is the head. Or the word is the head of the body. The church who is the beginning. The firstborn from the dead. That in all things he. Which is the word. Which is Christ. Might have. Uh, Preeminence, verse 19. 
For it pleased, listen to this, for it pleased the Father that in him, who was him again? The Word, should all fullness dwell. I love that. Verse 20 of Colossians 1. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him, who was him again, the Word, to reconcile all things unto himself, by him, which is the Word, I say, whether, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. So the scripture is giving us details of uh, going back to Psalms 107, verse 20, he, God, sent his word to heal us. The word being Christ, Jesus. The word is Christ, my Lord. Let's look at some more scriptures. Let's look at Revelation. See, because we, we, we got to expose what this word is all about. Let's look at Revelation uh, 19, all right? And let's look at verse 11 to verse 13. And this is John's vision, all right? John who was now on the Isle of Patmos. And these are the visions that he, the God showed him about Jesus. And I saw, verse 11 of Revelation 19, and I saw heaven open, uh-huh, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful. This is what the healers, this is another name of the healer, which is the word, which is Jesus Christ. He says, he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. He is faithful to heal you. He is true to his word. So the problem can never be with him. It can be with you. Called faithful and true and in righteousness, he do judge and make war. Verse 12 of Revelation 19. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Who is this again? The Word, Jesus Christ. And on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Verse 13 of Revelation 19. And he who was he again, the Word, Jesus Christ, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name, oh, I love this. Listen, people, listen to this. What was his name called? And his name is called the Word of God. I should just pack up and go home right now. That, that shut it. I don't even have to teach no more. I could shut that baby down right there. What, what was the name that they called Jesus Christ? The Word of God. Uh, 1 John 5, verse 7, what, what, what were the three witnesses that bear record in heaven? The Father, the who? The Word. Who was he again? Jesus Christ. And embedded in the Jesus, what did Psalms 107 verse 20 says? God sent the same word, the same Jesus, the same, a.k.a. the word of God, to heal you. I'm trying to help you. Verse 13 again of Revelation 19, very powerful. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the word of God of God. My Lord, you all reading this? Now, I think I've proven my case. I don't think I have to go any further in regard to who or what the word is. I have, I mean, given you more than sufficient evidence for you now to come to the determination, uh, like I did, that Jesus Christ, as clearly stated in the scriptures, is the word. Now, our next phase is, what, was the, what is the purpose of you, sir? What is the purpose? The purpose of the word, the purpose of Jesus. Of everything. And if there's anyone we ought to be looking to for advice or to partner our lives after, it should be him. And every spiritual leader that he has ordained in place to shepherd his people, those leaders should every time minister, ministering about the, the manufacturer of everything, which is the word, 
Jesus Christ, the Word of God. So, let's look at some more scriptures now. Because we want to see some more uh, reasons why the Word came. All right? Let's look at a prophecy, though. Let's look at a prophecy that was stated in the scriptures earlier prior to Jesus Christ's first coming. Okay? Prior to him coming through uh, Mary and Joseph. So let's go to Isaiah chapter 61. Isaiah 61, reading at verse 1, right? Excuse me, listen to what it says. Now this is a prophecy. A prophecy in regard to the Messiah, Jesus Christ, the Word, uh, the Word of God. It says here in Isaiah 61, verse 1, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Uh-huh. Why? Because the Lord had anointed me to do what? To preach good tidings unto the meek. Some translation says the poor. He had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom or liberty, to the captives or those who are incarcerated, particularly spiritually, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Mm, I love it. So these are some of the reasons why the word was sent, aside from healing. Okay? Now, let's see where that was fulfilled. So let's go here now to chapter 4. Let's go to Luke chapter 4, because we're looking at the purposes of the word now. What did the word, what is the word's benefit to humanity or for those who would sign on in being a member of the body of Christ? So let's look at Luke chapter 4, because we will make sense out of this. Luke chapter 4, beginning at uh, verse 18. Luke chapter 4, beginning at verse 18. And we're going to quickly read to verse 32, all right? Verse 18 of Luke 4. Listen, listen. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is Jesus now. Okay. Well, let's start from verse. Uh, let's start from verse seventeen. And there was delivered unto him, which was Jesus. He's now in the synagogue, the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Now, what he is about to read is what we just read earlier, in Isaiah sixty-one verse one. Jesus speaking. He says, "The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because He had anointed me." To preach the gospel to the poor. Now, let me put a pin here because I, I have to add this before I forget it. The reason why I'm showing you the purpose of the word, Jesus Christ, the word of God, uh, the Messiah, the, 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 the purpose of him is to, to of course, uh, give us our liberty in Christ Jesus, reconcile us back to God, heal us, and so on. But what we're going to go into is... Prior to Jesus' healing, Jesus had to give an explanation in terms of the gospel. The gospel became the prerequisite to healing. It was never replaced with a shofar. It was never replaced with a scarf. It was never replaced with oils and all of these other stuff that became nowadays the standard or, or replaced the word of God. Wherever he go, you will hear he preach and he teach. Then he cast out devils. Then he lay, healed the sick, opened the eyes of the blind, opened the ears of the deaf, raised this one from the dead. But it was pre, the prerequisite was they had to hear the word. And who was the word? Him. And we're going to see instances where he tell them he walk up to certain people. Um, he didn't preach, but watch what he said. The, the blind man, for example, he says, uh, Jesus, of son of Nazareth, uh, could you please heal me? And Jesus look at him. Do you believe I can heal you? What do you mean if I believe? Yeah. What is he saying? That's just like me giving you the Bible right now. and You have a sickness. And I say, now hold this Bible. Do you believe this word can heal you? Because what they were doing, they were standing in front of the scriptures, which was Jesus the Christ. And he's teaching us, his leaders, to tell my people, you're not their healing. You're not the one delivering them. Stop selling them stuff. Tell them about me, Jesus Christ, the word. And according to Revelation 19 verse 13, 
Jesus Christ, which is the word of God. Get out of here, that garbage. Talking fool. Plant your seed for your healing. You are a devil. You are a distorter of the gospel. You are preaching another gospel. That, and the people who buy into that will find their final physical destination before their time in some cemetery. I came to offend, but offending with the word of God. So the Bible goes on to say here, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, Luke 4 verse 18, because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach, to preach, to preach deliverance to the captive and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty or freedom them that are bruised. Listen, listen, verse 19, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. I love this. Verse 20 of Luke 4. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. Mm -hmm. And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is not this Joseph's son? See, whenever you stand in your calling, they go way back and bring up garbage, have nothing to do with me dealing with now. Huh? Ain't that's Margaret, boy. Margaret, he used to wait to the post office. She used to wait to road traffic. You know his, his brother. That, no, what I got to do with this? To Why are you always on a quest to pull us away from the word? I hear he was married before. He mentioned that. What? What? Is that going to heal you? Is that going to deliver you? Can't you see your program to run away from the word of God that was sent to heal you? The Bible goes on to say here, in verse 23, And he said unto them, Ye will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. And he said, Verily I say unto you, listen, listen, no prophet is accepted in his own home. So Jesus right there and then is declaring the end from the beginning. When they crucify him, he said, you're going to say when I'm up on the cross, yeah, great physician, yeah, word of God, why don't you heal yourself now? They still miss it all the way to his crucifixion. They still miss the fact that they were, that, that this, is the, this is the word that became flesh that was sent to heal these people. My God, Father, oh our eyes. Father, open our eyes spiritually in 2022. Father, remove the scale of ignorance, stupidity, remove the traditions, remove all of those hurdles and obstacles and everything else we have placed before the word. Father, remove this dark understanding, remove these things that are kept us away from the word that you have sent to heal us, the word that you have sent to deliver us from our destruction. Help us to focus on the word, which is your son, Jesus Christ. The Bible says here in 25, but I tell you, Jesus is speaking, but I tell you of a truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias or Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land. Listen, but unto, unto none of them was Elijah sent, save unto the, the Seraphat, a city of Zidon, unto a woman that was a widow. Listen, verse 27, and many lepers were in Israel time of, of, of Elijah, the prophet, listen, and none of them were cleansed, 
except or save Naaman the Syrian. Verse 28. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with anger. I came to offend. But, you, but those who are offended, you are offended because you hate the word of God. Listen what the Bible says. Jesus is the word of God that became flesh. It's telling them what the deal is. Instead, they accept, you know what? While I don't like Jesus, this is the word. No. They allow it to become poisonous. And they hate the messenger who's carrying the, not his, the word of the living God. The Bible says, this is so awesome. Verse 28 of Luke 4. And all they in the synagogue, church people, they... When they heard these things, what Jesus said, they were filled with wrath, anger, and rose up and trust him out of the city. Get out of here. And led him unto the brow of the hill whereunto the city was built, that they might cast him down or throw him head first. But he passed through the midst of them, went his way. And came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath days. And they were astonished at his doctrine. Listen, listen. For his word was with power. But I'm not shocked. Why, Mr. Yoy? Because he was and is the word of God. My God, I love it. So you see, what happening today is different than happened back in the past. Someone comes to you on the radio, on the TV, in the church, and stick into the scripture, pounding the scripture to you. You're angry because he have an access for seed. He ain't, ain't selling us no miracle cloth. He isn't asking us to purchase vials of oil. Who is this brother? Get him out of here. Nothing change. Nothing. Now, so far, we've expound on who and what the word is. Number one. Number two, what we did is we went to see the purpose of the word. What was he sent here for? Well, it starts out in Psalms 107 verse 20 that he sent to heal us, and then it says to deliver us from our instructions. We went through the prophecy given way before the Messiah came in Isaiah 61 verse 1, his reasons for coming. That was now fulfilled in Luke chapter uh, 4, beginning at verse 18. Jesus now go into the discourse and saying how, you know, n nobody is going to honor him among his own people. And how uh, he, he goes on to say how Elijah and all of those people too was there to do the will of God. Do the will of God and the opposition that they were met by. So I'm speaking to every uh, man and woman of God that believe in the scriptures very few of them, that truly commit not to other people's ways, not to churches' policies and programs. You believe the scriptures. Opposition will be the confirmation that you were sent by God. The Bible says, his own believed them not. First John chapter 1. No. No. We was looking for a king with some horses and chariots and gold and rubies. You come here broke. This, this couldn't be. No. But I'm saying to the, the young, the, 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 not the young, but those who are committed to this Bible say, stand strong. Because trust me, you, you will see. You will see the outcome. You will see. What, what you're seeing now is like in the days of. Or everybody on their own program. Everybody got their sales pitch. Everybody preaching everything except the word of God. And the Bible, not Kevin, the Bible says that broad is the way that will lead to destruction. Very clear. Very clear. And many will find their way on that road. Because they say to themselves, well, if everybody, I guess this is the right way. But that isn't what the scripture says. But the scripture goes on to say, it says that narrow and straight is the way that will lead to righteousness. And very few will find their way there. And why? Why is this? Because the broad, the ones who are going on that populated road, chances are they don't read the Bible. Because if they knew what the rules say, 
they will quickly find themselves off of that, that group. But they left the responsibility of the Bible being read to them by someone who had ulterior motives, someone who either wanted their money or bring the limelight on them. Now they must edit the scriptures to make themselves be the one that you come through to get to Jesus. <sighs> Let's go a little deeper. The third phase of this is the most powerful piece in all of this teaching. And I wrote this down last night when I was adding to this. Your quality of life will be based on how much of the word you believe or you subscribe to. The Bible says, by their fruit, you will know them. See, you put your foot in your mouth. I, I see a quick case of foot and mouth disease here. If you're telling me, Kevin, I am sold out to my Jesus, which is the word. Kevin, I don't care. Listen, I just eat, breathe, drink Jesus. I am in love with the word of God. Okay, I hear you. I hear you. But I'm looking at the quality of your life. I'm not judging you. What I'm doing is making a comparison of what the word says as to how things should be for you compared to what I actually see. And I don't see a consistency. Listen again. The quality of your life will be based on how much of the word you believe or subscribe to. Jesus told the blind man, do you believe you could be healed? Do you believe I can heal you? I am the word made flesh. Do you believe that? Do you, yes. Okay. Now, according to your faith, which is your belief in the word of God, which is Jesus Christ, the word became flesh. According to what you believe, now be it unto you. Now you see why Kevin can't stand the demon gospel of seed sown for miracles and seed sown for healing? Because the Bible never said, according to your belief in the seed, didn't read it, according to your belief in the shofar, according to your belief in the scarf, the Jesus juice, the Jesus grape, and the Jesus fruits, foolishness. Do you believe the word of the living God can heal you? Let's make sense of this. Let's, let's, let's get into juicy. Let's, let's, let's go deep. Let's go deeper. I want to go deeper. Matthew 13. I love it. Matthew 13, beginning at verse 1. Because it's now going to point out the true seed we ought to put our confidence in. Which is again the word of the living God. Which is who again? Jesus the Christ. The Bible says in Matthew 13, verse 1. The same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside. And great multitudes were gathered together unto him. So that he went into a ship and sat. And the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spoke many things unto them. In what? In parables or mysteries. Saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. Mm -hmm. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no depthness or deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Verse 7 of Matthew 13. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell into good ground and brought, I love this piece, and brought forth fruit, uh-huh, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Verse 9, listen, Jesus. Who have ears to hear, let him hear. The most powerful 
out of all of the verses I just read was verse 8. Why, Ewing? Because this we're about to explore right now. He talked about all of the tainted or tampered ground that the previous seeds fell upon. Hence, during their growth process, there were some hindrances, right? But I was taken aback when I dropped to verse 8, because verse 8 clearly states that those particular seeds fell on good ground. Hence, if it fell on good ground, why didn't all of them come forth hundredfold? Well, let's go back to my earlier statement. Your quality of life will be based on how much of the word you believe or subscribe to. My God. Boy, this, don't listen to this. Don't hear this. My healing, my finances, my everything. Manufacturer is telling me, Kevin, the quality of your life is hinging on how much of me you believe and practice. My God, you hear this? So this explains why some Christians could be successful in certain areas, then the other areas, they are failure. Why? Look at their belief system to the word in that regard. Mm. Mm. I'm about to go deep right now. Put on your scuba gear right now. Right now. <sighs> Listen to me here. Yeah? Many believers are on the register this year to become a, or to take up resident in the graveyard or in the cemetery. That could be avoided. That could be avoided based on, on your belief of the word. Every time somebody make mention of their sickness, whether it's cancer or or Whatever terminal ill disease, whatever Christian, every the other Christians come on, listen, listen, listen. Uh, I I claim healing, I claim healing over you. Uh, uh, rebuke you, devil. Go, go right now. Get, come from around here. Go, uh, uh, Satan. You are a liar. Go, go, go. Mm, I can just imagine Satan. Look, look at these fools. Just look at this. Just look at this. They don't subscribe to the word. They don't believe in the word. In fact, they're getting ready to go for their best seed right now. Do the same foolishness to compound what's going on here. <laughs> I, I just don't get it. I, I don't get the, the, the Jesus left the manual in place, and you allow somebody to change it, to edit it, to revise it. You could claim healing all you want. It's a waste of time if you are not following the rules. Are you following the rules? Huh? By your fruit, we will know you. Because now that you were advised that this is a terminal thing, and this is stage five, six, seven, whatever, I guess I'll be, now we can look at your fruit because every time I hear from you, oh, Kevin, I believe, oh, Lord, this, this thing will take me. Oh, hey, listen, 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 you who told me you sold out to Jesus. Listen, you who told me you stay in the word. Now, I'm not saying in the initial stages fear wouldn't overcome you. No, 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 I'd be foolish to say that. I'm saying to you when the consistency of your behavior, of your words, of your actions, if that is that a fear? And defeat, and then I, I must question, which Jesus were you referring to earlier? Now, like I always say, you're only going to do or practice what you always did. Fear and take you now, so you need to go to see a prophet. You need to bring your best seed. You need to purchase an oil. Why don't you just take the Bible? Which is the word of God, which is Jesus the Christ. He said, I, God says, listen, listen, believers, I have sent my word, which Kevin has clearly demonstrated is Jesus Christ. I've sent him to heal you. Why are you and these obey people out? Why are you to these herbalist people talking foolishness? Why are you giving someone who claims to be a servant of me money for you to be healed?
Why are you purchasing all kind of olive oil and foolishness to be healed? You are not declaring me the Christ through my word for your healing. What is your problem? And you're shocked that things are getting worse. To the extent you're now bitter with God. I don't know why when you weren't following his rules. I touch and agree. It's all your friends now because they, they, the only time they open our Bible is on Sunday. I mean, touch and agree. Satan gets. We bind you. you but what, where, what authority? What, under who and what authority are you binding him? Because you live in a double life. One foot in the world, well, one and a half foot in the world, and the other foot you got in the body of Christ when we see you. No, man, I don't need nobody that are praying for me. I wouldn't even tell them. I would only tell people who I know stand and show on the word of God. Who understand that the word became flesh. And that is where we put in our confidence. That is what we decree in every day. Father, I thank you because you have sent your word. To, you said that, your, that healing is the children's bread. Because of the stripes of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, 40 save one. I am healed and I'm gouging on the word of God with the expectation of healing as an end result. I don't want no shofar blowing around my head. I don't want no scarf. I don't want no oil. I ain't sow no seed. I am sticking with what? He has sent his word to heal me. Talking down. So listen to this now because it's going to get really, 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 really intriguing here, right? So verse 8 of Matthew 13 says, Other fell into the ground, but other fell seeds are this into the ground, and brought forth some 100, some 60, and some 30 fold. In the good ground, sorry. Verse 9 of Matthew 13. Who had ears to hear, let him hear. Because Jesus is about to unveil a mystery now. Watch this. Verse 10. Of Matthew 13. And the disciples came and said unto him, him being Jesus, the word, why speakest thou unto them in parables? I love this. Listen, listen carefully. Verse 11, powerful. He being Jesus answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries or the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. But unto them it's not given. So what is he saying? In so much words, you hear, you all know I am the word made flesh. They don't know. Hence, I have to speak to them on a different level. Stay still looking for a savior. They still looking for the Messiah to come. When you guys know that I am the word, I am here right now. So let's go back over verse 11 again. And he answered and said to them, because it is, I'm talking to them in mysteries or, or in coded language. Because they can't handle the fact that I am from God. If I tell them that, they're going to say I'm loony. If I tell them that, they're going to say, you see, that's the same reason why I'm listening to Foolish Radio. You know that, disciples. But today, sitting over here, I got to tone it down a little bit. Verse 11, he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but unto them it is not given. Verse 12 of Matthew 13, for whosoever have to him shall be given, and he shall have more in abundance, but whosoever have not from him shall be taken away even that which he have. Verse 13, therefore, listen, therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, Hearing, hear not, neither do they understand. I got to speak to them in parables because they looking at the word that was made flesh, but they don't see me. They hear the word that was made flesh, but they don't hear me. They look, they don't understand who I am. And I'm talking to you right now. You're begging for healing and you're, you're going to every avenue except that book called the Bible. You have no confidence. But Kevin, yes, I have confidence in the Bible. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't. Jesus is saying to you, ma'am, or sir, listening to me right now, put your confidence in, I left my word. I visited here, 
over 2,000 years ago, I became flesh and dwell among you. I, I was crucified, and now I'm seated on the right hand of the Father, but my word, which is me, is still with you. Engage my word. Put down the hocus pocus, put down the marketing schemes, put down the watered down gospels, put down the sow a seed for miracle, put all that garbage down. It is not of me. It is another gospel. Now come back to the word of God and put your confidence there. I told you how to take this pill of healing. I said meditate upon it day and night. Take it in the morning, take it in the night. Re meditate means to sit down, ponder it, play it over and over. Because of his stripes, I am healed. Father, I believe I'm healed. Father, remove the negative voices. Remove the negative. Father, I'm not going to lie to you. I am saturated. I am, I am overwhelming and fear right now because they told me my prognosis don't look good. My di diagnosis don't look good. Father, I try my best not to focus on that, but it's hard, Lord. Help me. Your word declares according to Isaiah 26 and 3, Lord. You said that if I keep my mind on you, you said that you will give me perfect peace if I keep my mind on you. Father, it's hard. Talk to your Jesus. Tell him, Lord, it's hard. I ain't gonna lie, Lord. Even though I'm saying this right now, Lord, I'm, fear is overriding me. But you said you did not give me the spirit of fear. What are you doing? You're meditating on the word day and night. You're meditating. Father, I will do it until I see change. I will speak, decree, and declare your word until things change for me. But I refuse to subscribe to something that is not of you. I wouldn't sow a penny. I ain't buying no oils. And my confidence is in the word he has sent to heal me. And that's you, Jesus. Father, I believe you say according to my faith, according to the word of God in me, be it unto me. I receive healing right now. Right now, Lord. My lungs, my kidneys, my throat, that cancer. Father God, that blood disease. Father God, that tumor. Father, I believe by faith, by the spirit of the living God. You, Jesus, who God has sent, I receive you. I embrace you. I agree with you. I stand on your word, according to Matthew 18, verse 19. You say, Heavenly Father, I'm joining my hands with those that truly believe scripture. Not no stupid seed. Scripture. I'm standing with those who believe the scriptures. And you say, wherever two or more of us touching anything on this, I shall ask of the Father in the name of Jesus. It shall be done. We receive healing right now. We stand on the word of God right now. We stand on the scriptures. Right now. Right now. We stand on the word of the living God right now. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ. The word became flesh. Revelation 19 verse 13, it says that there was a name that was written and it was called the, the word of God, a.k.a. the Messiah, a.k.a. Jesus Christ, a.k.a. the word. Father, I embrace your word. Father, I gouge on your word right now. Forgive me. First of all, forgive me, Lord, for putting my confidence in money, treating your kingdom and your system and your rules is as if this is the kingdom of God, where everything is generated by money. In fact, your word declares that the love of money is the root of all evil. And it has caused some to depart from the faith. Father, I don't want to be found in that bunch. Teach us, help us, guide us to put our confidence in the word that God had sent to heal us. The Bible says here, let's go back to the scripture now. I love this already. Let's go back here. The Bible says here, watch this now. Verse 17. No, oh, sorry. Let's go back here to verse 13, therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, hearing hear not, neither do they understand. They don't know who's standing before them. They don't know, the, they, they don't know that the actual earth that they're living on and benefiting and profiting from, they're, they're, they're looking at the one who created it. 
They're looking at the one that everything that exists was because of this word, Jesus Christ. Verse 14. And in them, this Jesus was speaking, is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. Because he gave another prophecy. Listen to what he said. Which said, by hearing you shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see and not perceive. Verse 15 of Matthew 13. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, meaning they're spiritually blind, deaf, and dumb. Least at any time they should see with their eyes that this is truly the word of God standing before us, and hear, their ear, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted. And, and do what? And what you're going to do? Finally, get a Jesus, and I will heal you. Y'all read that? Y'all read that, right? Y'all listen. I don't think y'all listen to what I say to y'all. You know, y'all hear what the scripture saying, right? Jesus said the day they stop subscribing to everything else, the day they realize that when they read the word of God, they're reading me, or even back then, they don't realize that they are standing. They are conversing. They have this opportunity to engage the manufacturer of all creation. He said they see but they see not. They hear but they hear not. They can't even understand who is standing before them. But yet they're going to run to subscribe to everything else except the true word of the living God. My Jesus. My God. You all hear this? You all listen to this? They have no, when you're holding that Bible, see, you, your, your appreciation for Christ through his word should, should trump everything in your life. Preacher, if you ain't preaching this word, I can't hear you. I, I like you. I got to shut it down there because I need to have a better quality of life in every area of my life, physical and spiritual. And based on what I'm reading, it's all hinging on how much of the word of God I commit to. So listen to this. Watch this, right? Let's go deeper now. Verse 17. For verily I say, for verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. Verse 18 of Matthew 13. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. Okay, let's go now. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understand it not, then cometh the wicked one and catch it away, that which was sown in his heart. So the different grounds represents the heart of men. The seed was the word of the living God. The sower was the preacher. My God. Verse 19, when one heareth the word of God and understand it not, then cometh the wicked one and catch it away that which was sown in the heart. This is he which receiveth seed by the wayside. Seed again here is the true, authentic word of God. Not money. Verse 20 of Matthew 13. But he that receiveth the seed into the stony ground, or he that receiveth the word of God in a stony heart, the same as he that heareth the word and annoy with joy, receiving it, jumping up, flipping about, but never studying, continuing to study the scriptures and fast and so on. Verse 21, yet had he not rooted himself, but dure it for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth, because of the word, that's the only reason why, by and by he is offended. Mm -hmm. Verse 22, he also that receiveth seed or word among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. You're sowing all these seed and we can't see no benefit in your life. You ain't getting healed, you're broke, you're sick, you're hustling, you're begging, but you're sowing your seed though because you're doing everything except what the scripture requires you to do. I love verse 23. But he that receiveth the word of God in the 
good ground. Mm -hmm. Meaning that in his heart, in a good heart, I, I believe this, is he that heareth the word and understand. Now, this is key. Do you, yeah, you hear it, what Kevin is saying, he's reading the scriptures, but do you understand this? why? Because you are just given the formula as to how this will represent the quality of your life. Because the Bible says, now this is good ground that the seed is being sown on. Who are you getting your seeds from? Let me give you an example. Church A, telling you, go to the scriptures for healing and focus on because of his stripes you are healed. He is your Jehovah Rapha, the God that healed you. He has sent his word to heal you. All of this they're telling you, now con co commit to this, repeat it, decree it, now engage the word of God. Church B telling you, yeah, you, you could do that, but you got to plant a seed. You got to sow something in the ground. If you want whatever is released from your hand will be released from God's hand. By this oil, by this Jericho juice, Jesus spray, by all this garbage. Well, your heart was good ground, but based on what you were taught in church B, you will not see the result in church A. Why? Very simple. Those in church A, right, according to what I'm reading here, they heard the word and understood the word. It says, meaning that they did not enter the word. They did not revise the word. They didn't add or take away from the word. They accepted it for exactly what it said. No gimmicks, no nothing. And now all we see is fruit up in that bad boy. All we see is fruit over and over and over again. Pure fruit. Pure fruit. But they said over here begging, 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 begging. But, uh, 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 apostle, uh, ain't nothing happening. What happened? Because you ain't sold enough seed. Come bring more of your money here, fool. Come on, bring that money here. You will be healed one day. And then when you're dead, you know, they tell you sometimes, glory be to God, sometimes healing is when God take you home. Mmm. 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 Before you say, it was too much sin in my life. That's why I was in heal. Now that I'm dead, you put a spin on it. That was my healing right there. <laughs> Boy, I tell you. There's room on the cross for y'all, too. Mmm. Y'all hearing this? The quality, I'm going to say it again, the quality of your life will be based on how much of the word you believe or subscribe to. The Bible made it very clear in Matthew 13 verse 23. It says, yes, some seeds were sown on good ground. Good hearts was the word of God deposited in. But their response towards it was a different story based on what they understood. That's why we need good Bible teachers and preachers. Not to preach us happy. Not to everything about life as things. I see God giving you a car and a house. Buddy, you saying that, but little that none of us know that the next couple of weeks, that same person is going to be diagnosed with a terminal. What will the car and house mean to them then? Teach people to engage the scriptures. Because it will be what they subscribe to and do that will determine the course of their lives going forward. That's what I'm reading. Let me give you an example. How we engage the scriptures. Okay? Let's go quickly here now. Let's go quickly to... We can come right back here. Well, actually, we finished that one there. Let's go quickly here to, to uh, Job. Let's go to Job chapter 14, right? Job 14, verse 1. Listen to what it says. Man that is born of a woman is a few days, meaning that their time is limited. However, their lives are full of trouble. So, we are understanding from the scripture, trouble will become the inevitable for all mankind. Trouble will become the inevitable for everyone. Now, 
Remember what I said. Now, that's the word of God. Okay? You heard it. Now, if you truly understood what that said, now you're going to look for scriptures to show me how could I address the trouble before it come to me. Not wait for the trouble to come and then I announce it on Facebook or whatever and then everybody who don't read their Bible, oh, we believe in for your turnaround. Jesus is a healer. I hear God say, get out of here. You non-Bible reader. So if the scripture is telling me that man that is, and every man and woman is born of a woman, so trouble is the inevitable. We cannot avoid it. It will come to all mankind. But can we address it according to the word before it happened? Yes, we can. And in this case, we're going to use sickness because that's what we're dealing with, all right? So let's say in this trouble, we're talking about sickness now, okay? How can we address this? How could we set the, the groundwork to deal with this? Okay, now let's go to Psalms 41. Psalms 41, beginning at verse 1 to verse 3. Because we, we now, now that we're learning, we're learning how to, to not only according to uh, Matthew 13, verse 23, he says, yes, good seed was sown on good ground. But there was a formula to produce real fruit, and that is to hear and to understand what you hear. So now that you could do to get 100, we don't want 30-fold, we don't want 60-fold. I want 100. So to do that, I must hear the word, I must understand the word, now apply what I hear and understand. It is true context. Here is one of them. Psalms 41. Remember, we're dealing with sickness now. We know we're going to be sick and something's going to happen. We ain't prophesying nothing, but we're looking around and we don't want to be like those over there. So the Bible says in Psalms 41, beginning at verse 1, it says, Blessed is he that considered who? The what? The poor. And those who help the poor, okay, this is how we are now. This is what you call faith. With works. Okay? Blessed is he that considered the poor. Now, what is going to happen to the man who has considered the poor? Well, it's saying here, the Lord will help him in his time of trouble. Okay. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. Uh-huh. He shall be blessed upon the earth. That's the same man who's giving to the poor. And thou, God, will not deliver him to the will of his enemies. This is the part I like. Verse 3. The Lord, listen will strengthen him uh -huh, upon the bed of languishing or upon his bed of sickness. Whoa, 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 whoa. Minister Ewing, are you suggesting, are you insinuating that I could put an order right now by investing? It's just one of the rules. If I secure the needs of those that are less fortunate, that I could guarantee that if or when my day of sickness come, God got to hook me up, unless you can't read, that's exactly what it's saying. Why oh, I talking to somebody. I trying to help you. I try to help you. I, now, you go, if you won't go sow seed for, for miracle, which the Bible doesn't require, and then you still end up in the grave, that, will you continue to go and do that? I am giving you the word of God, and I expect for some to be offended. They was offended at Jesus when he gave them the word. Why? Who is this dude to go against our rules and bring in the rules of the Savior? Because that's what you really say. The quality of my life is predicated based on what I hear of the word of God, understand, and now do what I heard and understood. So God says, every time you help the poor, you are securing a position in the future that if any form of sickness, disease, or whatever happened to you, you have a right to call on me. And I will answer. Because you followed my rules. But don't come talk mess when you hear so-and-so sick. Oh, I claim healing right. Get devil, go! Ha, ha, ha. Clowns, jokers. This is, what is this, an amusement park? Get real, people. Get real. Come back to the word of God. Come back to the word that was made flesh. He has sent his word to heal you. Why are you listening to these people telling you everything except 
the unadulterated, authentic word of the living God. Why you are upset with those who are bringing you the gospel? The Bible says, how beautiful are the feet of those that preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I love it. I love it. You all hear this? Listen to verse 3 of Psalms 41. Oh, look, what, what was the prerequisite to all of this? All this guy did was change the circumstances of those that were less fortunate than him. He or she didn't realize that they were securing their own destiny via the investment of someone less fortunate. That's why I was telling you in my teachings when teaching about the poor repeatedly, I said the greatest, the greatest investment you can make going into 2022 is to invest in the life of someone who could do absolutely nothing for you. Why? Because it's God that's going to pay you back. The Bible says that he that giveth to the poor shall never lack. The Bible says he that giveth to the poor, God will pay him back. The Bible is saying here in Psalms 41 verse 3, he says he will also help you during your time of say, I will strengthen you. But if you never were taught these rules, if you never knew any of this, you do what everybody else do. Oh, bring call. I, I need to go to prophet is so and so. Oh Lord, listen, I ain't gonna strength, but I can write this memo to the bank and te- draw off four hundred thousand dollars. Cause you know you gotta give to the prophet. I will hear the word of God, you know. Mmm. Mmm. You're still messing up even in your sickness. He said, if you give to the less fortunate, in verse 1 of Psalms 41, verse 3 guarantee that he will strengthen you on your bed of sickness. You, through these false voodoo workers, saying you got to go give all your money to the prophet. Show me where you see that in the scripture, and God will heal you. Again, let me make my disclaimer. I say don't give the prophet no money. I say that. But if you're looking for stuff like healing and so on, which the Bible has clearly tell you the rules to it, you are following another gospel. And you are compounding your situation. Now you're putting yourself under an additional curse because now you believe that person over the word of God. And what does the Bible say? According to Jeremiah 17 verse 5, Cursed be the man that puts his trust in man and make flesh his arm or his strength. For he shall be like one in the desert and don't even recognize good when good come to him. That's for those who follow him. Now, what's the scripture for him? Galatians 1 verses 8 to 9, Paul said, If anyone among us in my entourage, even an angel, preach another gospel, let him be a curse. And he repeated it in Galatians 1 verse 9. My God, my God, y'all hear this? Y'all can listen to this, right? I ain't making this stuff up. For the Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. Thou, listen, listen, thou will make all his bed in his sickness. Could somebody please call Dove and show me a, 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 a scripture that if you give seed, God can do this. If you get the, the, the miracle oil and the, the miracle supernatural underwear and the jockey and foolishness you all subscribe to, show me where the word guarantee you healing through those means. I came to offend, but I'm offending with the word of God. Scripture. So as you would have seen clearly, the Bible says that, that the even though you receive the word, you're hearing it. But the quality of that word is another thing. Are they adding or taking away from it? Because it's going gonna, it's gonna to be revealed in your destiny. Now you're going to say, but I care what I did every day. I fast, I did this, I did that, but nothing has happened. Really? Really? Did you really follow the word? Or were you following the word according to you, but still, still subscribing to what mom and them used to do? Oh, mama says, take turn 
Psalms 91. Mama say, put salt in the house. And, and you know, and mama say, get the type of and mop the floor. And mama say, get the ammonia and pour it around the house. But when I come to the prayer, you got this big Bible. You didn't, you didn't tell me all, and you knew it was wrong because you never mentioned those things to me. If it was of God, then why didn't you tell me, well, Kevin, a part of me reading my Bible, I practice in some obi on the side too. Why, why didn't you say that? You know why you wouldn't say? Because you know it's witchcraft. But yet, 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 you would tell me, oh, Kevin, a part of this series I'm going to Going on solely on why believers don't get healed. And, and the main thing is, got their hand dabbling in sorcery and claiming to be looking to God for miracles. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here with that foolishness. Talking nonsense. Again, your quality of life will be based on how much of the word you believe or subscribe to. Faith is the word of God. You hear me? The, the word of God is faith. God is looking for every one of his children. Are you engaging my word, which is faith? That's who it, God ain't looking for no seed from you, unless it's the word of God. God ain't looking for no shofar, no miracle claw, miracle pillar foolishness. He's looking for his word, which is your faith. Let's quickly now go here to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. What does it say? Very clear. But without faith... Or without the word of God, which we will prove in a little bit, it is impossible to please him. So God, all of this seed I've been bringing, these people tell members bring you, you say $1,000, $500, $8 million. So you telling me none of that impress you? God ain't even going to answer you. Because in this way, he ain't going to answer you no more. He don't answer you. So God, the man say that on the way here to the Bahamas, the Lord spoke to him. He brought a bunch of 500 vials of oil that he paid a penny, uh, sorry, a, uh, uh, yes, a penny for on the swap shop over there. But he sent it to me for 100 and said, you say to do it. You see your sickness get worse, right? That makes sense. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 verse 5, 6, but without faith or without the word of God, it is impossible to please him. You cannot please God without his word, which is his son, Jesus Christ, which Revelation chapter 19 verse 13 referred to as the word of God. I love it. I love it. Kevin, man, talk to me. Well, how, could the, how could faith be the word of God? Well, let's look at some more scripture. Let's go here now to Romans 10. Romans 10 verse 17. Romans 10, verse 17. Oh, we can, we can bring this home right now. Romans chapter 10. Romans 10, verse 17. What does it say? Listen, Romans 10, verse 17 says, So then, faith, uh-huh, cometh by hearing. Now, you want to know what faith is, right? Well, we can know what faith is in the next part of the scripture. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing, hearing disco music? No. Hearing stuff of TV? No. Hearing by the word of God. So he says, this faith was going to come? The word of God. So what is faith then? Faith is the word of God. So when Jesus told the blind man, okay, you believe I can heal you? Uh-huh, yeah, I believe you. I believe that. So what are you saying? I believe that you are the word made flesh. So Jesus said, that's what I wanted to hear. According to your faith. According to the amount of word that you believe and act upon, be it unto you. Now healing will be your portion. Now the house will be your portion. Now the husband will be, not because you gave me money and seed. The scripture says it is impossible, meaning that it cannot happen. You cannot please the Almighty without his word, which is faith. Mm, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. I love it, I love it. Let's go to James now. Let's go to James, James chapter 2. Let's go to James chapter 2, verse 14 to verse 26, very quickly. James chapter 2, beginning at verse 14. What do it profit, my brethren, thou a man, say he had faith and have no works? 
Can faith save it? Can the word alone save you? No. You need to put action to it, like I just told you. You know trouble coming up in the future, okay? So what does faith say? Faith, 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 faith uh, caution you. Oh, every person that is born of a woman will face troubles in this life. Faith now goes on to tell you some things you could do to deal with the trouble. And he says, now, if you invest in the life of four people, when troubles come, God has, a, has an obligation to help you. So James saying, faith alone, meaning the word of God standing by itself. No, 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 no. That's just like if you, 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 have, you bought a toy for your child during the Christmas, a little motorbike or, or whatever it is that you got that child. Okay, whatever it is that you got that child, check this out. Uh, you have the instructions, you read it. You know how to put it, you, it's all of that you see. Now, you, you put the instructions down and the box still there. Is the car gonna just assemble itself together? No. Faith would have been those instructions. The work says now you're taking that instructions and putting it to use by assembling that child vehicle. But don't sit down there and, oh, because of this crime, I'm healed. What are you doing? What other things are you adding to your faith, such as works, to bring about the promises of God? Going back now to Matthew 13, verse 23. Yes, you were good ground. Yes, the seed was sown there. You heard it. You understood it. But you didn't do it. So you come back to the man of God. I did it. You did not do everything because you didn't do the last part of it. You didn't put works to the faith or the word of God that you claim to believe. Hence, Jesus said to the blind man, he says, do you believe you can be healed? He said, yes. And why did he say yes? Because you, you, Jesus, you are the word made flesh. Jesus says, oh, I love you. He said, now because of that now, look, at, look what you cause. You cause the supernatural in your life. He says, be it unto you according to your faith. I'm, I want you to go, because my time is limited. I got less than 10 minutes, right? I want you to go to James chapter 2, verses 14 to 26 to see more on this faith and works as it relates to healing. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to, I want to end with this last passage of Scripture. And this whole teaching for today is just the foundation of, we trust we're going far deeper than what we're doing right now. I just needed to lay out the foundation. So now that when we build, we build it on a solid foundation. So in your spare time, you deal with James chapter 2, verses 14, verses 14 to verse 26. All right? Now, I want us to end with this particular scripture in Matthew chapter 8. Begin with this. Matthew chapter 8. We're going to bring this all together now. Matthew chapter 8. And we're going to read from verse 5 to verse 13. Okay? We can end right here. This could be powerful. We're bringing it all together now. We're bringing everything that I've said so far together. All right? Matthew chapter 8, beginning at verse 5. We're going to end at verse 13. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, this is verse 5 of Matthew 8, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of palsy. Mm -hmm grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. Because I'm sure at this point, okay, Jesus probably was saying, this fella probably don't know that I am the word made flesh. I am healing. All right? But he got a little surprise for Jesus too. So verse 8 says, verse 7, sorry, and Jesus said unto him, the centurion that is, I will come and heal him. Verse 8, the centurion answered, and said, Lord, <laughs> listen, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. Listen, listen, listen. But speak the word only. Speak you then, Jesus. Because God has sent you the word, you, Jesus, you the Messiah, to heal us. So the centurion said, boy, you, I know who you are. And I am not worthy. Look at the honor. I know you are the Christ. I know you are the healer. I know you are the one to reconcile us back to God. This wasn't a Jew. This wasn't those of him, his own. It was those on the outside who had a better recognition and honoring of the Christ than those who were supposed to know who he was. 
So the centurion says in verse 8, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. I talk unto somebody. Verse 9, for I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth, and another come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. Verse 10 of Matthew 8. When Jesus heard it, he marveled, he was surprised, and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, listen, listen, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. I have not seen the word in such a person like this. Not even among my own. This man understands, for he has eyes, now he sees. He has ears, and now he hears. He has a heart, and he understands who he is talking to. He is talking to the healer. The one that was made flesh and dwelt among us. The scripture goes on in verse 11. And I say unto you, Jesus still speaking, that many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Wow. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way. And as thou hast believed, listen to that word, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed that same hour. Mighty God. Why well, could go on with this for the next three days? You all listen to the word of God today. You all, you all hear this? I am so I'm talking to someone right now, whoever you may be. Whatever condition, yeah, they, you're probably in hospice listening to me right now. That is not limited to the power of God. Your confidence must be in God's word. I know you've heard a lot of erroneous teaching. I know you saw a lot of seed. Forget all of that. Focus on what you heard today. I'm pointing you to the word of God. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for your awesome unadulterated, authentic word. I join my faith with everyone listening to me now and will even listen to this and watch this recording in the future. I bind my faith with theirs right now, believing and standing on the word of the living God, that if they have done the prerequisite or the will of God to secure their healing, I claim healing now. I claim it for them. I come in agreement with you, mom, right now. With you, sir, I am standing in the gap with you parents for your children on drugs right now or caught up in something they shouldn't be in. We are standing on the scriptures. I'm not sending you no vial of oils. I'm not asking you to sow no seeds. And I will never ask you to do it because it is not the will of God for your healing. The word of God is all you need. And the prescription of this medication, he said, according to Joshua 1 and 8, and according to Psalms 1 verse, meditate upon it day and night. Father, I cover them under the sound of my voice with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, that you'll remove the scales from their eyes, unclog their ears, and give them a heart of understanding to receive this seed that I've invested in them, which is your word. I didn't lead them to me, Lord. I didn't give them no hocus pocus. I gave them your word. And now if they add works to the word, they will see the manifestation like the blind man and like the centurion servant. And in both cases, he said, now according to your belief of me, the word made flesh, be it unto you. Father, we bless you. Father, we honor you. Father, we praise you. And we ask these things in the matchless and in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So, folks, that's it for me. I will be back here next week, God spares life, to continue with this powerful understanding of how we must achieve healing God's way. God bless you until we 